Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're tackling a really interesting geometry problem that actually turns out to be a logic puzzle. It's called maximize area of square hole in grid. If you've ever tried to customize a grid layout or cut a hole in a mesh, this problem is basically the algorithmic version of that. We're going to break it down step by step, so even if the description sounds complex, you'll get it by the end. So here's what we're working with. We are given a grid defined by a height n and a width m. But here's the twist. The grid is made of bars. We have a list of horizontal bars we are allowed to remove, called H bars, and a list of vertical bars we can remove, called V bars. Our goal is to remove some of these bars to create the largest possible hole that is shaped like a square. We then need to return the area of that square. The catch is, we can only remove the bars listed in our input arrays, the rest are fixed in place. Let's visualize what removing a bar actually does. Imagine a ladder. If you knock out one rung, two spaces merge into one bigger space. In this grid, removing one bar merges two little one-by-one one cells. If you remove two bars that are right next to each other, you merge three cells, and so on. The key rule here is that the size of the gap, meaning the length of the empty space, is always equal to the number of consecutive bars you remove, plus one. Keep that plus one in mind. It's the core of the math here. Let's walk through an example to verify our thinking. Suppose we have a grid where we can remove horizontal bars 2 and 3, and vertical bar 2. Look at the horizontal bars first. Since 2 and 3 are consecutive numbers, we can remove both to create one big continuous gap. Two bars removed means a length of 3 units. Now look at the vertical bars, we only have bar 2. Removing it gives us a length of 2 units, so we have a hole that is 3 units wide and 2 units tall. Since we need a square, our side length is limited by the smaller dimension. The minimum of 3 and 2 is 2. So our square is 2 by 2, giving us an area of 4. Just a quick heads up, we'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages, like Java, C++ and JavaScript, towards the end of the video. The logic remains exactly the same. So how do we solve this efficiently? The editorial calls this the sorting approach. The core intuition is that the size of the hole depends entirely on finding the longest streak of removable bars. If we have bars 2, 3 and 4, that's a streak of 3. But if the input gives us bar 3 then bar 2, the computer doesn't know they are neighbors until we put them in order. So step 1 is always to sort our lists. Once they are sorted, we just need to walk through them and count how many numbers appear in a row before we get into the code. Let's talk about the real reason people fail at lead code. It's not because they can't reverse a linked list, it's because they break their daily streak. I built my daily to do specifically to solve this. You can set solve daily leak code as a routine task. This means it reminds you to complete your routine tasks every day. It's a dedicated system to force you to be consistent, which I also use to remind myself to upload these videos every day. If you're watching this channel, you're trying to improve. So this tool makes sure you actually show up to do it. I also want to be 100% transparent about how this app will grow. I am an indie developer, not a big corporation. I will never take away a free feature you already use, core features like repeating tasks remain free forever. However, as I add new server-heavy features, they will be part of the premium plan to help cover the costs of running the app. Also, the price of premium will go up every time I ship a major new feature, so the best time to get involved is right now, while it's early. Check it out at the link in the description. Okay, we've talked about the big picture and the logic. Now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first, and don't worry. After that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. All right, here's the complete Python code for the sorting approach. It might look a bit long because we repeat the same logic for both horizontal and vertical bars, but the core idea is very simple. We sort, we loop, and we count. Let's break this down, piece by piece. First things first, we sort our h-bars and v-bars lists. We can't find a consecutive sequence like 2, 3, 4, if the list is in random order. Next, we set up some variables. We have hmax to store the best streak we've found overall, and hcur to count the current streak we are looking at right now. We initialize these to 1, y1. Because even a single isolated bar in the list counts as a streak of 1, now comes the main logic. We loop through our sorted bars starting from the second item. Inside the loop, we ask a simple question. 
Is the bar we are looking at exactly one greater than the previous bar? If yes, it means they are neighbors, so we extend our current streak by adding 1 to hcur. If no, the streak is broken, so we reset hcur back to 1. After every step, we update hmax to make sure we remember the longest streak we've seen so far. We do this exact same loop for the vertical bars too. Once we finish both loops, we have hmax and vmax. These numbers represent the maximum count of consecutive bars we can remove. But remember the rule from the beginning? The actual length of the hole is the number of bars plus 1. So we take the minimum of hmax and vmax to ensure we have a square, add 1 to that minimum to get the actual side length in grid units, and finally multiply the side by itself to get the area. Let's quickly double check some edge cases. What if the input list only has one bar, like just bar number 2? Well, our loop starts at index 1, so for a list of size 1, the loop never runs. Our hmax stays at its initial value of 1. The formula gives us 1 plus 1 equals 2. This is correct, because removing one bar merges two cells. What if we have bars like 2, 5 and 8? They aren't consecutive. The if condition will never be true, so hmax stays at 1. This is also correct. The best we can do is remove one isolated bar. So how fast is this solution? The time complexity is dominated by the sorting step. If H is the number of horizontal bars and V is the number of vertical bars, the time taken is roughly H log H plus V log V. The actual scanning loop is very fast, just linear time. For space complexity, it's very efficient. We basically use constant extra space or logarithmic space depending on how the sorting function is implemented in your language. Alright, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++ and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down, so just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. Alright, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up here is the C++ version of the solution. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Remember that in JavaScript, you need to provide a comparison function to the sort method to sort numbers correctly. So let's wrap it up. We learned that this scary looking grid problem was actually just a sequence problem in disguise. We used sorting to line up our bars, counted the longest consecutive streak for both horizontal and vertical sides, and then used a simple formula to get our area. It's a great example of how simplifying the problem statement can reveal an easy solution. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leap Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this Leap Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code. It really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.